Johannes van der Waals, who was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1910 for his work on the properties of gases and liquids. To start with, let us explore the first of the van der Waals forces, the one between two permanent dipoles. Observe this. Here, we have two polar molecules, but with a very fixed configuration, such that the interaction is attractive. The dipoles are aligned end to end, and the potential energy of the interaction is given by this expression. If you look at the negative sign, it implies that this interaction is indeed attractive. And should we reverse the direction of one of the dipoles, then the interaction becomes repulsive, as indicated by the change in the sign of the proportionality constant. Here, nu a and nu b are the magnitudes of the dipoles of the molecules, which are separated by a distance r. Likewise, we could have dipoles as shown here. Once again, you may be able to guess that this interaction is attractive in nature. If you look at the expression for potential energy of this configuration, we have should we reverse the orientation of any one of these dipoles, the interaction becomes a repulsive one. In general, the potential energy between two fixed dipoles is proportional to the product of the dipole moments and inversely proportional to r cubed. The constant of proportionality, which may or may not be positive, is determined by the positions and relative orientation of dipoles. Do note that this proportionality holds true only for fixed dipoles, which is generally appropriate for molecules in the solid phase. In liquids and gases, however, the molecules are free to rotate, so it is silly to assume that dipoles are fixed. Hence, we need some really clever mathematics, which shows that the average or net energy of interactions of freely rotating permanent dipoles is given by where T is the temperature or the absolute temperature in Kelvin and Kb is the Boltzmann's constant. We see that the potential energy V is inversely proportional to the sixth power of R. So, the energy of the interaction falls off rapidly with increasing distance. Attractive interactions that fall off as R to the negative 6 are collectively referred to as van der Waals interactions. So far, we've only worked with either charged ions or permanent dipoles. Naturally, you might be curious as to what would happen when one or both of the interacting species is a neutral atom or a nonpolar molecule. For instance, here we have a neutral molecule. Now, next to it, we put a charged species. It could be an ion, it could be a permanent dipole. Now, because of the charge separation, the electron distribution of the otherwise neutral entity will be distorted by the electrostatic force exerted by the charged species. Thus, a charged species induces or encourages the formation of a dipole on an otherwise neutral atom or nonpolar molecule. The dipole generated in an atom or a nonpolar molecule is said to be an induced dipole because the separation of positive and negative charges in the neutral entity is due to the proximity or the closeness of an ion or a polar molecule. The interaction between dipole moment of a polar molecule and the induced dipole of a neutral nonpolar species is called a dipole induced dipole interaction. If the dipole moment of a polar molecule is of magnitude mu, then the potential energy for the dipole induced dipole interaction is given by this expression. The term alpha is called the polarizability of the nonpolar molecule. Now, it is a measure of the ease with which the electron distribution in the neutral entity could be distorted by an external electric field. The dipole induced dipole interaction is another example of the van der Waals force or van der Waals interaction because it falls off as the inverse sixth power of distance. Unlike interactions between two rotating dipoles, this dipole induced dipole interaction is independent of the temperature because induced dipole moment is formed instantaneously and the value of potential energy P is unaffected by the thermal motion of molecules. In general, both ion induced dipole and dipole induced dipole interactions are weaker than ion ion, ion dipole, or dipole dipole interactions. So, if you are looking for the magnitude of interactions, we can summarize them as
The cases considered thus far consist of at least one charged ion or one permanent dipole among the interacting species. We must also consider the case where both the interacting species happen to be non-polar molecules. If there were no attractions or interactions between such species, then non-polar substances like helium, nitrogen, carbon tetrachloride and benzene would all exist only in the gaseous state, which is certainly not the case. Although the first two are gases, CCl4 and benzene are liquids at room temperature. In 1930, Fritz London, a German physicist, showed using quantum mechanics that the potential energy of interactions of two identical atoms or nonpolar molecules is given by here alpha is the polarizability of the atom or molecule and i1 is the first ionization the forces that arise from this type of interaction are also known as dispersion forces because the force or the forces increase with increasing distance as r to the negative 6 these forces as in london forces or dispersion forces are also classified as van der Waals forces.